Oh, by the way, how come I was the only one there working tonight? We were there this afternoon, Barb. A likely story. How's it look? Eulish, very Eulish. Have you got your Santa Claus suit ready? Yeah. What time the little bastards arrive? At one o'clock. Terrific. Hello? Pardon? Who? Bob, it's for you. Long distance. Oh, great. Hang on, I'll take it in the other room. We're just having a little party. No, I've had a couple. Oh, come on, I'm not drunk. No, no, um, I have some stuff to do in the afternoon, and then I was just gonna get the, the 720 train into the city. Oh, come on, you gotta be kidding. Why can't I come too? Well, who the hell is he? Good night. You're a real gold plated whore, Mother. See you next you know week. Okay. Hey, call before you come. I'm going to have to get my parents used to I'll just get a couple of my friends and we'll okay. go uh, skiing. <laughs> yeah, sure, I'm on fine. I'll, I'll see you around. You want to go skiing for a few days? Yeah, sure, Bob. My mother's taking a place up at Mont Holly. Does anyone else want to come? Yeah. Sounds like fun. Great. How about you, Claire? Uh, no thanks, Barb. I've made some other plans. Okay. Expanded his act. Could that be one person? No, Claire, that's the Mormon Tabernacle Choir doing their annual obscene phone call.
Listen, you pervert, why don't you go over to Lamb of Kai? They could use a little of this. Big cut. You want my fat cock too? Oh, why don't you go find a wall socket and stick your tongue in it? That'll give you a charge. I'll stick my tongue up your pretty pussy. You fucking creep! I'm going to kill you. Well, super tongue strikes again. Fastest tongue in the West. That was sick. I really don't think you should provoke somebody like that, Barb. Oh, listen, this guy's minor league in the city. I get two of those a day. Well, maybe. But you know, that town girl was raped a couple of weeks ago. Darling, you can't rape a townie. You really are too much, Barb. Oh, come on. This is a sorority house, not a convent. I'll see you later. I'm going to go pack. Ugh. Come on, Claire. She didn't mean anything. No, really, Jess, it's okay. I have to finish packing anyway. Hasn't she had enough trouble fitting in here without you getting at her all the time? Come on, I know a professional version when I see one. Hey, can I get a hand on here? Speaking of professional versions, here we have the Queen of Vaudeville, circa 1891. Oh, I've been shopping. You know, I think the stores must take tacky lessons this time of year. I never saw such a bunch of Mrs. Mack, come in the other room. We've got a surprise for you. Come on, girl. Let's just okay. get you up, because yeah. you're, you're tired. Night. You really are. Good night.
Yes. You girls are just too good to me. Oh, nonsense, Mrs. Mack. Hello? Hello, it's Jess there, please. Yeah, wait a second, Peter. Jess, it's for you, it's him. Hello? Hi, how was the party? Oh, it was good. Too bad you couldn't make it. I've been, I've been practicing for four days straight. I'm really, really wiped out. Yes, I know. Jess, dear, you won't forget to put out the lights. But you've got to find some time. I've got to talk to you. You sound funny. What, what's the matter? Nothing's the matter. I just want to talk to you. Why don't you tell me now? Because I want to talk to you face to face. Jess, I haven't been to bed in three nights. I'm just not in the mood to be playing games. Look, Peter, we'll talk about it tomorrow, okay? Okay, I'll, I'll be in room 30 all day. All right. I'll see you around, too. Yeah, I didn't mean to sound short with you. I, I guess I'm just exhausted, okay? Yeah, it's okay. I love you. I know. I'll see you tomorrow. Jesus, I wouldn't wear this to have my liver. Oh, thank you. It's okay. I'm sorry. I should have been keeping a better watch on you. I think so. Yeah, well, I said I was sorry. Excuse me. I hate to bother you. I can see that you're busy. But I wonder if you could help me. You see, I was supposed to meet my daughter here at 1 o'clock. It's, it's half past now, and she's still not here. Her name's Claire Harrison. Do you know her? Claire Harrison? Yeah, I think so. I know she lives in a sorority house. It's it's called, um, uh, Pi, uh, Kappa Sig. Oh, of course, yeah. Well, Kappa's our sister sorority, yeah. Some of the girls are over here today, but I haven't seen Claire. Uh, the place isn't far. I'll tell you how to get there. Ho, 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 shit. Santa, please. 
Look, she's supposed to be going away with me for the weekend, God damn it. Well, we decided that we would go skiing for a few days, hmm? Yeah, and I've been looking forward to this for three weeks, bitch. Isn't Santa naughty? Ho, 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 fuck. I just don't know, Mr. Harrison. Her clothes are all packed and ready to go. I bet you'll find her over at the common room. They're having a party there today for underprivileged children. Yes, I know. I'm very disappointed in this atmosphere. I intend to do something about it. Who's this? Uh, uh that's uh, a friend of Claire's, a very nice young man from the town, uh, Chris Hayden. I didn't send my daughter here to be drinking and picking up boys. Oh, Claire's a good girl, Mr. Harrison. I wouldn't want you to get the wrong idea about that. She is a good girl. I'm sure you'll find her at the fraternity house. As a matter of fact, I could show you the way. I, I have to go to a store near there, if you wouldn't mind giving me a lift. I know where it is, but I'll be glad to give you a ride. Uh, This is very kind of you, Mr. Harrison. I'll just get my bag. I didn't send my daughter here to be drinking and picking up boys. Tough shit. You're supposed to be responsible. To the morals of every girl in this goddamn house. These broads, the leaning tower of Pisa, if they can get up there. I do my best. I don't know what the bastards expect of me. Christ's sake. Claude? Is that you, Claudia Kins? Claude? Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Come on, Claude. Come say goodbye to Mommy. Is that you, Claude? Oh, Jesus, Claude. Look what you made me do. Come on, Claude. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Come on, Claude. I gotta go. Here, kitty. Oh, God damn it, Claude, you little prick. This is very kind of you, Mr. Harrison. Think nothing of it. Yes, that's fantastic. I don't want it. You don't want it? No. I want to have an abortion. You can't make a decision like that. You haven't even asked me. I wasn't even going to tell you. Jess. I want us to have a baby. Peter, I can't. Oh, Christ, Jess. Don't you ever consider anyone but yourself? I've thought this out very carefully, and I know what I'm going to do. 
you know how important this afternoon is to me? Yes, I do. Why don't you just get out of here? Jeff? I want to talk to you tonight. There's nothing to discuss, Peter. I think there is. I'm not going to change my mind. We'll see. Will you be there at 9 o'clock? Yes. Okay, I'll see you tonight. Yes, dear. Now, I'm sure there's nothing wrong. Yes. I've just been talking with a friend of hers. She's going to call around for me. Yeah, it's all right. Yes, well, if we don't have any luck, I'll go to the police. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I don't think we're going tonight. It's a bit late to head out now. I think the little bugger snockered, son of a bitch. Any yeah, sure? well, goodbye, dear. <laughs> you aren't. again. Billy! Billy? Oh, I'm sorry, you have the wrong number. What your mother and I must know is... Where did you put the baby, Billy? You've got the wrong number. Where did you put Agnes, Billy? Billy? Look, I'm telling you, you have the wrong number. What your mother and I must know is... Billy! For a public servant, I think your attitude really sucks. Shut up. Now, Mr. Harris, if you're convinced your daughter is missing, you can fill out one of these forms. I don't know if it's any consolation, but 90% of the time, girls are reported missing from the college. They're at a cabin somewhere with a boyfriend. Thanks. But that's not much consolation. Oh, here, Mrs. Mack, let me help. Thank you, dear. You know, we gotta get Mr. Reynolds to fix this door. I must have called that son of a bitch a hundred times about it. Oh, Mrs. Mack, there was another one of those calls just now. Oh, what there, dear? It was weird. Some woman screaming, then a man wailing. A Claire Harrison's father was here today. Oh, really? I'm sorry I didn't get to say goodbye to her. Well, you still might. Claire didn't meet him where she was supposed to. I, I thought she went over to the fraternity. Where is it? Those bottles don't drink their salt, for God's sake. Eureka. Excuse me. Could you give me the number at the sorority house? Please. Yeah, sure. It's, uh, fellatio 20880. Fellatio. It's a, it's a new exchange, F-E. It's a new one on me. How do you spell it? Capital F. E, little L, L, A, T, I, O. Thanks. Don't mention it.
What's up? Have you seen Claire today? No, she went home. No, she didn't. No one knows where she is. Are you serious? I thought maybe she was with you, or at least you might have heard from her. No, not since last night. Well, her father came to pick her up at one o'clock today, and she didn't show. So he went down to the police station with Phil and Bob. What happened? They didn't take it seriously. Why? I don't know. I think they figured she was shacked up somewhere. for Christmas holidays, but there was a bad practice over at the high school this afternoon, and, and Janice plays a clarinet. And uh, when she didn't come home, I, I phoned Melody Green, that's her best friend, and uh, they hadn't seen her all day. She's only 13 years old, Lieutenant, and my husband's a trucker. He's out on the road, and so I came over here. Yeah, well, is it really so unusual for her to be just a few hours late, Mrs. Gwen? Oh, yes. She should have been home at noon. We were going to buy a present for her father. Nash, you stupid son of a bitch. You got a big goddamn mouth. What the hell are you talking about? Hi, Chris. How's your brother? Ken, I got to talk to you. What's up? I want to know why nothing's being done about Claire Harrison being missing and why this... Idiot gets away with saying the things he does. You're a friend of Claire Harrison? Yeah, I've been taking her out. Oh, this is uh, Jess Ken. She lives in the same sorority house as Claire. All right, come on in. Sergeant, bring me the file on the Harrison girl. And take care of this. something, Mr. Harrison. You know, starving yourself isn't going to help the situation at all. No, thank you very much, Mrs. McHenry, but I just have no appetite. I feel I should be doing something, but I don't know what. Well, why don't you just try to stop worrying? The best thing you can do is stay right here. I'm sure she'll call her show up soon. But you just knew what to do. Did you know, this is a very little known fact, but did you know that there's a certain species of turtle there's a certain species of turtle that can screw for three days without stopping. You don't believe me, do you? Well, I mean, how could I make something like that up? Uh, Barb, dear. Uh, I, I, I... Uh... No, really, they just three days, 24 hours a day. Boom, 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 boom. Can you believe that, three days? I'm lucky if I get three minutes. Do you know how I know this? Because I went down to the zoo and I watched them. It was very boring. Well, actually, uh, I uh, didn't stay for the whole three days. I went over and I watched the zebras because they only take 30 seconds. <laughs> Premature ejaculations. <laughs> 
You think it's my fault, don't you? Barb, stop it. Don't shit me. That's what you're all thinking. Why don't you just come right out and say it? You think that I drove her away. And if she's dead, you're gonna blame me. Barb, for God's sake. Well, that's what we're all thinking. Why doesn't someone just come right out and say it? Barb, dear, you've had too much to drink. Mr. Harrison... I don't gonna... give a shit about Mr. Harrison. I'm sick and tired of everyone in this house insinuating stuff and not coming out with what they mean. Barb, why don't you go upstairs and lie down for a while? Shut up. And you leave me alone. God damn you. You think it's my fault, don't you? You've been implying it all afternoon. Barb, you're drunk. Go to bed. Where's Mr. Harrison? Uh, he, he's in the dining room. I'm sure Claire will be all right. I hope so. And I just want to tell you that I'm going to go to my sister's for the holidays, so I might not be here when you get back. That's okay. okay. Look, it, just check in on Barb before you leave. Could you do that? Of course I will. And you bundle up. Yeah, we'll be all right, Mrs. Mack. Mrs. Quaid and Mr. Harrison have asked me to extend their thanks to you for coming out on this cold night to help. Now, Mrs. Quaid has told us that Janice most likely came through this park on her way home from school today. So the first thing we'll do is comb the park. When I tell you, I want you all to assemble on the south edge of the park with your assigned officer, and then we'll just walk through the park. Spread out evenly, don't bunch up. There'll be two sets of dogs leading the way. Just spread out and follow them. George and Carly, stay out on the flanks. Fumes will mess up the dogs, and don't go more than 10 miles an hour or you'll be no use to us. Now, if any of you find anything, I want you to send someone out immediately to report it to me. Is that clear? Are there any questions? Okay, let's go. But goodbye, leg, if you get away late. Lollies always love to pop.
get up in the attic, Claude. Sheesh. All right, God damn it, you can wait. Claude, are you up here? Jesus Christ, how does he how could be up here? Claude! Jesus, Claude, now look what you made me do. Anybody there? I don't know if anything happens. Hello? Hello? Who is this?
Yes, hello. Um, I've been getting obscene phone calls, and I want to know what can be done about it. Yes, all right, I'll hold, but only for a moment. <gasps> Peter, Jesus, you scared the hell out of me. Why didn't you say something? Yeah? Well, you scared the hell out of me, too. What was all I yelling about? I was upstairs having a little sleep. I hope you don't mind, but it got a little cold out there waiting for you. I'm sorry I was late, Peter. Yeah. Claire Harrison is missing. I was out with a search party looking for her. Yes, hello? Oh, no. I want to report something. No, I don't want to hold. How did the recital go? How do you think it went? Peter, what kind of a game are you playing? I thought you wanted to talk, so why don't you quit attacking me and we'll try to have a rational adult conversation? Yes. Now stay on the line. Okay, now calm down, lady. Let's have the story. Oh, yeah? That's the address. Six Belmont Street. How many calls? Well, did you call the phone company? Oh, yeah? Well, miss, we're very busy here. There's been a child murdered in the park. I don't know when we can get a man on it. It's probably just one of your boyfriends playing a little joke. Yeah, well, I'll report it and try to get a man on it just as soon as possible. I'm sorry, miss. Jess, what's wrong? Little girl was found murdered in the park. What? The search party that was looking for Claire found a little girl murdered. Claire's still missing. Well, Claire's all right. Is she? Now, listen, Jess, I know you're upset. But I've got something to tell you. Mm. I'm leaving the conservatory. Peter. I know, just hear me out. Will you hear me out, please? Now, I've lived in one room for eight years, and I'm tired of it. I'm tired of having to line up behind six people every time I want to take a bath. I've had it. I'm quitting the conservatory, and we're getting married. We'll say something. Do you remember when we first met? You told me about your wanting to be a concert pianist. How it was your greatest dream. And I told you about some of the things that I wanted to do. I still want to do those things. You can't ask me to drop everything I've been working for and give up all my ambitions because your plans have changed. Be realistic. I can't marry you. Sure you can. What does it change? We could be married. You could still do anything you wanted to do. Peter, I don't want to marry you. All right. What about the baby? I uh, didn't want to bother you with it, sir. Oh, you did. Six Belmont Street. That's where your daughter lives? Yes, it is. A high school girl's been murdered. Mr. Harrison's daughter is missing. And now at the house where she lives, the other girls are getting obscene phone calls. Don't you think we ought to look into it, Nash? Well, Lieutenant, I guess, uh, sure. Thank you, Lieutenant. Yeah, thanks, Ken.
Sergeant Nash, could I speak to you for a minute? Yeah, sure, huh? <laughs> What's this? Well, that's the number at the sorority house. Collation? <laughs> yeah, it's a new exchange. F.E. No exchange? Yeah, Felicia. One of the girls that was in this afternoon gave it to me. She gave it to you? Yeah. Nash, I don't think you could pick your nose without written instructions. Something dirty, ain't it? Tell me what I can and cannot do. Jess, if you try getting an abortion... I think you better leave. If you try getting an I abortion... I said get out. You're going to be very sorry. Hi, Peter. I'll get Jess. Okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Any more news? No, but there's some people here to say about the phone calls. Jess, this is Lieutenant Fuller, and I'm sorry. Uh, Graham, Bill Graham. Are you the person who called the station today? Yes. I would like to put a tap on your phone, but we'll need your written permission to do that if it's okay with you. Okay. Okay, Graham, you can go ahead. And I'd like to see Claire Harrison's room. Here. Where's the telephone? Uh, there's one in the living room and one here in the hall. Claire's room's up here. How many girls live in this house? Uh, usually ten. This is lineman Graham at 6 Belmont. I'm working line 559-6114. Right. This afternoon, I got a call from a woman that I thought was the wrong number. But then she started screaming at me. Well, who was the last one here to see Miss Harrison? I think I was. When? Approximately. Last night, about 10.30. Just the way she left her room, as far as you know? Yes. What's this? We were having a party last night. She drink a lot? No, hardly at all. Do you have any emotional problems, anything like that? No, not clear. Who was she seeing besides Chris Hayden? No one. Sure that? Well, so you were the last one to see her sometime this morning? Last night. Right, last night. Well, did anyone see her this morning? No, I didn't. And all the other girls have gone for the holidays. Can I get a list of their phone numbers where I can reach them? Sure. There's one in Mrs. Mack's room. Who's Mrs. Mack? She's the house mother. Another girl, Barbara College. She's upstairs asleep. Um, she's not feeling too well. Is she the one that was at the station today? Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll let her sleep. Okay. Were there any deliveries uh, yesterday? Or was anyone working in the house, anything like that? No, I don't think so. Mrs. Mack would know. Is her sister's number on this list? Yes. 
Graham, how's it going? You about finished? Yeah, what I've done is I've tapped this phone so that when it rings, it'll ring at the station house, too. At the same time, I'll be at the phone company checking on the location of the source of the call. Are there any other phones in the house? Uh, yes, the house mother has a number. Yeah, but it's another number and there haven't been any calls in it. You're going to have to keep this guy on the line as long as possible. We've got a mechanical system here and it takes a while. I know it's not very pleasant, but... Uh, girls, can I show you something? See the car outside? Yeah. We've got one of our men in it, so you've got nothing to worry about. Yeah, sure. I guess I'm just exhausted. I've been taking these pills for my cold and they knock me out. Will you be okay if I go up to bed? Yes, of course. Are you sure? Yes, go up and get some rest. Yeah. Everything clear on your end, Jeff? Okay. Sure. Uh, yeah. Now, look, I'm gonna need about ten more minutes. Now, be sure you tell those people again, they gotta keep this guy on the line. Right. Because he hasn't worn his hat for the last two days. Yes, we certainly will live into that. Thank you very much. Graham's nearly ready at the switching station. Now, when the phone rings at the house there, this one will ring, too. The transmitters have been removed, so uh, we won't pick anything up at all from this end. Great, thanks. Lieutenant, the men are here from Scarborough. Okay.
nightmare. I dreamed a stranger was coming in my room. I guess that's what it gave me asthma, huh? Take it easy. It's all right, pal. Just relax. You should be so lucky I had a stranger coming in my room. children in the car. Oh, what's going on? Please, just get them into the car. Okay, kids. Let's go. Come along, children. Hurry. Miss? Miss? Thank you. Merry Christmas. There was a little girl murdered over in the park tonight. Yes, I heard. Your phone's ringing. Oh, yes. Excuse me. Good night. Certainly. Good night. Testing. Bill Graham. Trace calls coming in on front nine. Hello?
Who? Jess. We didn't get him. Look, there wasn't enough time. You'll have to keep him on the line longer. I see. When you said, uh, oh, my God, did you recognize something? No. I guess it was just kind of getting to me. Uh, when he called before, did he use more than one voice like this? Yes, yes, he did. He used several different voices. Jim, I meant to ask you tonight, uh, who was the guy that was leaving when I arrived at your house? My boyfriend, Peter. Were you having a fight? But Jess, I'll have to call you back in a little while. Are you all right? I'll call you back in a little while and we'll go we'll get him next time. Bernie, yeah, call the doctor. I'm not letting no son of a bitch trespass on my land in the middle of the night. I don't care what kind of what uniform What the hell is going on here? You fired on a police officer. You goddamn right. I do it again, too. The bastard who trespassing. Hogan got an ass full of bird shot. Yeah, and I'm going to make son of a bitch pick every one of them out with his teeth. The next time, you're going to get the gun up your ass. Sideways. If you laugh, you can, and I'll bust you to Boy Scout, I swear. <laughs> if you think it was Peter, then why didn't you just tell the police? Well, because I'm not really sure. Well, they should be stopped. Whoever it is should be stopped. God, Jess, I haven't had a minute's sleep around here. There's been so much noise in the house. What the hell was all that yelling about? He repeated almost word for word what Peter said to me tonight. Couldn't it just be a coincidence? Oh, God, Phil, I don't know. I'm so confused. Oh, look, Jess, I really don't think it could be Peter. You know, I don't like Peter much, but I don't think he's that sick. I can't believe Peter would do this. He's so gentle most of the time. Oh, God, Phil, you know, I'm really getting scared. Look, are you sure that cop's still out there? Yeah, he's there. Hello? Jess? Yes? Peter, don't cry. We can straighten things out. There's nothing to get so upset about. Yeah? It's Bill Graham. You want me to trace that one? Yeah, I'll try and get it. Right. <laughs> Jess, we can't kill David. Please, Jess. We can't, can't kill David. Peter, where are you? Please, Jess. You know how I feel about the baby. Don't do this. Jess, don't hurt the baby. Stop this, Peter. You want a baby. I, I know you do. I, I don't want to hurt the baby. Jess, please. Peter, please tell me where you are. Just aren't long enough. Right. Yes. Jess, Lieutenant Fuller. You want to tell me what that's all about? You listen to that? Yes. What did he mean about killing the baby? <laughs> Jess, it's important that you tell me. I'm pregnant. I told him I didn't want to have the baby. When did you tell him this? Today. Just today, you're sure? Yes. We can't kill.
killed a baby, that's a strange way of putting it. Peter's an artist. He's very high strung. Neurotic, maybe? No, no more than a lot of people. Jess, are you telling me the truth? I've got a feeling you're holding something back from me. Now, I don't want it to be Peter, but if it is, he needs help. Do you know what I mean? The sooner the better. Now look, think back. Was Peter with you any of the times that you got one of these calls? Yes. Yes, he was here. He was at the house tonight when the first call came. That's right. It couldn't be Peter. Phil, it couldn't be Peter. He was here. Well, he's obviously upset about something. I'd like to talk to him. Can you tell me where I might reach him? Uh, well, he lives at Baker House, uh, but when he gets like this, he usually goes down to the recital hall at the music conservatory and plays. Now look, Jess, if you get any more calls, you're gonna have to keep him on the line longer. You're not giving us enough time to get a trace. I'm trying. You know, it really upsets me. Yeah. Right, of course. Look, you're doing fine. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Thank God. I knew it couldn't have been Peter. Well, what can I tell you? Covered the entire campus area. We're working our way toward the lake now. Where do we go from there? Start them out on the south end of town, have them work their way through town on a house to house. And, uh, and you'll be safe. Oh, okay. You understand? Thanks, yeah. so yeah. we will. And remember, there might be others from the search party around, so yeah. uh, don't be afraid. We'll be around oh, to see okay. that you're safe. Good enough. Thank okay. you very much. Just remember to lock those doors and windows yes. down there. Okay, okay. okay yeah. then. Bye, Good night now. <laughs> I'd rather face the killer. <laughs> no, seriously, do you realize this is the only door and window in this whole house that's locked? Dash. Get the Dean of Admissions on the phone. Tell him I want all records on a Peter Smythe, music student. Then have a car meet me out front.
Are you there? Phil! Hello? One forty, terminal fifty five. Come on, just a set to have his skin to wrap his baby eggs. Uh, Lieutenant Fuller. Yeah, Nash, what is it? A phone company's on the other line, sir. They say they got a trace on this one. Yeah, let's have it. He says the calls are coming from number six, Belmont Street. For Christ's sakes, Nash, you got it wrong. That's where the calls are going into. That's where they're coming from, too, sir. through to Jennings. I want you to call that girl. Nash, be calm. Don't tell her that the guy's in the house. Just tell her to put down the phone and walk straight out the front door. I'll be there in five minutes. Nash, if you blow this, I'll kill you. Phil? Phil, where are you? Please answer me. Sergeant Nash, are you the only one in the house? No. Phil and Bob are upstairs asleep. Why? All right. Now, I want you to do exactly what I tell you without asking any questions, okay? N no questions. Now, just put the phone back on the hook, walk to the front door, and leave the house. What's wrong? Please, Miss Bradford, please just do as I tell you. Okay. I I'll get Phil and Bob. No, no, no! Don't do that, Jess! Jess! The caller is in the house. The calls are coming from the house. Jess! Jess! Get up! And don't go out there. Miss 
Bradford.
Jess, are you all right? Jess? Jess, are you in there? Jess? Jess? Jess, is that you? Jess, are you in there? Answer me. What's all the yelling about? Jess, you had me worried. What are you doing down here? God, it was that kid. Why would Peter start killing people? I don't know. He must have made a call after... after each murder. It's hard to believe Jess would kill anybody, much less Peter. Well, she's under. How long do you think it'll be before I can talk to her? Just a couple questions. Well, she'll be out for at least four hours and pretty groggy after that. What time do her parents get here? A couple of hours. They're driving down from Unionville. I'll stay with her till then. But the condition she's in, I wouldn't count on talking to her before tomorrow afternoon if I were you. Has anybody notified Patrick Cornell? Who? Uh, Phil's boyfriend. It's okay, I'll do it. Uh, Lieutenant, I think we're going to have to take these bodies to the morgue in the Lincolnville. The hospital doesn't have facilities to handle this many at one time. All right, tell the coroner they had to get started on the autopsies right away. And notify the parents for identification. Yes, sir. Uh, I think that about wraps everything up here, sir. Uh, state lab guys will be here in about an hour. Thanks, sir. Uh, reporters, sir, and the television news guys, they want pictures. Get them out of here. Tell them I'll meet them down at the station. All right, guys, come on. Come back. Bradford girl being charged with the same thing. All right, you guys. Hey, Come on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Father, yes, the girl's father's upstairs, but he can't tell you. Would you keep it down, please? We've got a sick girl in here. Look, I'll level. I don't know the whole story, but I'm sure. Not here. Let's go down the station. Come on, get out. Come on, move. 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 Come on,
Somebody get him downstairs. He's got to go to a hospital. You should be all right, Mr. Harrison. He's going to be back at noon. Get out of here. You must get a hand here. Hey, you. Dash, will you see that everything's wrapped up? All right, Lieutenant. Will do. Hey, Lieutenant. Hey, you. Come on. Ow, ow. You want to spend the night in the can? Boom. Jesus, what's the matter with this guy? He's suffering from shock. We have to get him to the hospital. Can you get us a car, Nash? Yeah, yeah. Let's go. All right, McCloskey. You heard what the lieutenant said. All right.